When I first met Andrea Carr and Peter Williams back in 2004, they dreamt of opening a designer bed and breakfast by the sea. They sold their organic cafe in London and invested their future in this dilapidated, disused hotel on the Cornish coast. We're not having children together, so this is like, you know, it has... We're having a house. <laughs> We're having a house. But the project went way over budget. This has, like, completely been a money pit, and we've just been pouring energy into it. And their relationship was severely tested. The pressure was so intense that, really, was it worth doing it? A year later, I've come back to Cornwall to see if Peter and Andrew's B&B has been a success. But first, this is their story from the beginning. Who wouldn't turn their backs on the pressures of city life to come and live here? Well, that's exactly what Peter and Andrea are trying to do by setting up a stylish, organic bed and breakfast in part of a disused hotel here in St Ives. And this is it. Discovered on a weekend break six months ago, it was love at first sight. With the help of another investor and a huge loan, they bought it for £750,000. The plan is to split the building into three five-bedroom houses. One belongs to the other investor. The middle house will be done up to sell on, and the corner house they'll keep as their new home and B&B. &B. St Ives is a busy tourist town with loads of B&Bs, but Andrea is a set designer and Peter is an organic baker, so theirs will be different, stylish and organic. <laughs> so this is it. This is our little pad. And work started already. You're moving on. We're on such a tight schedule. You know, we want to get the house on the market before Christmas so that the money comes through from that, which will then fund the final bits of the B&B &B and give us hopefully enough money to get through the season, Brilliant. even if we don't get any customers. So. Well, let's see how you get them. Come on, stick OK. It. it needs a lot of work, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, basically, it's going to be completely rewired, completely replumbed. I have a horrible feeling some of the ceiling's going to have to come out. All the walls are going to... <laughs> Excuse me. It's a labyrinth of rat-infested rooms and a rotting extension. Have you got your head around what you've actually taken on here? I know what I'm doing. I haven't got a clue what I've taken on. <laughs> <laughs> what they've taken on defies belief. First of all, they need to divide the building into three. The third house belongs to their business partner. The middle house will become a five-bedroom luxury home for sale. The corner house will be Peter and Andrew's new home and B&B. &B. It will have a living room, a communal dining room come art gallery, and a large kitchen on the ground floor. On the first floor, there'll be three guest rooms, each with their own ensuite facilities. Peter and Andrea's quarters will be on the top floor. The sale of the middle house should leave them with a manageable mortgage and a stylish bed and breakfast, up and running in time for Easter. Until then, they've a mountain of debt. Including interest payments, it's going to be over a million pounds. <sighs> Which is a huge for, amount of for money. For first-time developers, is like, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing like jumping in with both feet. <laughs> Normally people do development thing. I buy something for 50 grand and do it up and try yeah. and make 20. Yeah. And you thought, let's just spend a million quid. Did you have a million quid? No. <laughs> it's because it's a commercial development. The banks or whoever would lend the money would give us 70%. So we had to find 30%. We knew by sort of scraping together money from various places, Andrea's inheritance, borrowing money from parents, that we could get half of it together. You've, still... you've absolutely borrowed up to the hills, haven't you? Against everything. Yeah. <laughs> because they've borrowed so much, they must finish the middle house fast. It should then be worth around £425,000, which will make a huge dent in the loan. It's risky, but the prize is worth it. Long-term plan is to regain a quality of life that, um, that I lost when I was in London. To relax, to 
to not be so stressed out by you know, running a business six, seven days a week, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Um, although running a B&B will be seven days a week, the actual hours and the actual amount of work involved hopefully will be a lot less. Very brave. Yeah, I don't really think about it in those sort of terms. All I do know is I've left London and I shan't be going back there. Brave or not, it's a huge task. They've got to rip out doors and renew electrics, plumbing and rotten timbers. They've got to put up new walls and decorate everything. All this in just seven weeks. The middle house must be on the market in December when house buyers flood into St Ives. First job, demolish the extension and strip out the rooms. But it's a fragile building, not used to such rough treatment. Oh my God. Brian's been taking cells off here and the vibration basically has jolted the whole thing. A load of tiles has slipped which uh, means that Adrian's got the joy of going out there on the roof to fix it. Well, sooner him than me. I want a good stiff drink. <laughs> I'm on top of the wall, Mark! <laughs> For Peter, it's an alarming start to his journey, from organic baker to bed and breakfast proprietor by a project manager. Let's hope the rest of it is not so bumpy. It's November in St Ives, four weeks after building work began. Peter and Andrew's dream is to build a new B&B and escape London life. The electrics are in, new walls are up, and others are still coming down. Peter is now living in the dusty site and settling into his new role as project manager. So, uh, I've just had the delivery, and there's one thing missing from it. It's a far cry from his life as an organic baker, but Barry, his builder, is keeping him on track. Peter's partner, Andrea, is the third key part of the team. She's based 300 miles away in London and is a full-time set designer. Despite the distance, she's in charge of design. I suppose because of my theatrical background, I'd like to think it would be a bit of an event that what we are creating, yeah, is an experience. I mean, I'm probably more, more the kind of person that would probably keep it very, very white and then interject some quite strong colour in places. Working together is all part of their new life. We've been together for over seven years but we've never really done a joint project together. We've had quite separate lives in a way and Peter's lived in my flat for most of that time so we need to sort of develop our relationship as much as anything else and they're both emotionally and practically really and this idea sort of seemed suddenly to sort of light a fire. For the moment, Andrea will stay in London, controlling the design by phone and visiting every few weeks. Longer term, she's keeping an open mind. It may be that I choose to spend six months in Cornwall, one year, but I might, you know, another year only dip in and out. I really don't know. But I mean, again, of course, because my relationship is, is changing because of this, so I don't know how that's going to uh, affect us, you know. Back in St Ives, the focus is on the middle of the three houses. The aim is to get it on the market before Christmas. Then they can concentrate on the B&B, &B, finishing that in time for Easter. Hi, Peter. Hello, George. How are you? I'm very well, how are you? Good to see you. It looks all hectic. It's messy as it has been for the last few weeks, basically. <laughs> getting Come messier on. and getting cleaner. Let's go and have a look. How's it all going? Is it going as well as you'd expected or not? It's going pretty well. The gaps between the houses are now gradually being filled uh, in. It's all bricked in and uh, yeah. the drainage system has been taken away. Actually, these rooms are moving on, aren't they? You've got artery trays around the doors. You know, that's plastering, skirting boards are on. By this time next week, this will be ready to paint. So how's everything going in here? Because time's... Time, really pressing on, isn't it's it? It's getting very tight. Um, most of the structural work has been done, so we've got the steels in so that um, the house won't fall down anymore. 
and now the guys are working overtime, so they're working Saturday and Sunday as well. So it's it's going to be very tight. I think if we can get it done by the second week of December, it'll be okay. Pushing it a bit, aren't you? Just a bit. It looks it to me, but um, <laughs> our architect came down last week and he said it looks a lot worse than it actually is. He reckons we will be done, so uh, he's the expert, so I'll, I'll rely on his judgment. Architects are always optimistic. Never believe them, <laughs> honestly. Trust me. Never believe them. And that's an architect telling you that. <laughs> Great. The deadline is starting to look unlikely. It doesn't help that communication with Andrea, 300 miles away, is far from easy. It gets frustrating because I go to the B&Q in Red Roof, Andrea goes to the one in London, and this again is sort of long conversation, and we end up having to get the barcodes to read those out to you. Oh, no, that wasn't the one you were talking about, it's that one over there. Um, and so you're both standing in We're both B &Q, standing in B &Q, reading One in London, the other right. one in Cornwall. Yeah. Reading. Talking on the phone saying, what are you looking at? Is it yeah. the same one? Reading barcodes. <laughs> That's Basically brilliant. Basically reading barcodes to each other. And it works. Andrea has very high standards, and her designs for the bathrooms are making life difficult for the builders. I mean, we put on suites up, and they've come down, and then we put them back up. Well, one, we put up seven times. Seven? Yeah, seven times. And now I think they like it. <laughs> They'll find that out tomorrow. Andrea is coming to inspect the work. Yes, look forward to it. <laughs> uh, I think that, that will be, uh, yeah, it's always nice to see Andrea because Andrea um, puts her stamp on the properties. There isn't really much that she can change now. She was down a Three weeks ago, four weeks ago? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, there's plaster on things. She won't do it. We, we've had discussions about budgets. So what's, yeah. what's, what is, is. I might have a day off. <laughs> Stay out of the way. <laughs> Let Barry sort that one out. <laughs> Lovely lady. I'm just going to make do my notey things. So this, this actually hasn't changed at all, has it? No. I'm going to have a look at the kitchen. It doesn't feel so... so uh... <laughs> Extraction above the sink. Mm. Why is that? I don't know, to be honest. Mm. OK, well, there's meant to be a toilet there. Horrible, aren't they? <laughs> God, has he chopped these floors up as well? Has he done all this? Yeah. Yeah. God, dread not look at this floor now. Oh my God, it does really, really piss me off. Okay. Hours later, Andrea heads back to London, leaving just a few things to do. Hmm? Little list. <laughs> this is what Andrea leaves for me. Joking apart. The changes affect much of the work that's already been done. Andrea has a keen eye for detail, but she's spending a lot of time and money on this house at the expense of the B&B. Lovely. Nevertheless, Baz and Peter throw everything at the jobs on the list in a desperate bid to finish the middle house. It's December, a good time to sell property in St. Ives. The question is, are they ready? Morning. Morning. How are you? Morning. Is Peter anywhere? He's just gone out, he went down the town. <laughs> he went for his coffee, didn't he? He's gone down the town, yeah. That's sod's law when I come to see him, and he disappears. This was all supposed to be finished and on the market today. I mean, all this plaster still hasn't even had time to dry out. So none of this can be decorated. And to be honest, it's an absolute tip. <laughs> you could never sell this place for at least a month. Smell the paint. The paint finish is pretty shoddy, though. It's not the nicest, smoothest job you'd imagine. But it's not all bad news. This is going to be a lovely room, actually. Really, really beautiful room. And just look at that view. It's to die for. Now, 
Now, your original plan was to have House 2 on the market by now, but it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. There's a lot of that down to just being in Cornwall and removed it's from been the things that you need. 300 miles away from the things that we need, which you can get down here, but it's a four to six week delivery thing. So, uh, oops. So basically, things take a lot longer, which is why I keep ending up dashing up to London or the smaller things, having them careered down. So how are things going generally? I mean, they're moving at such a pace. They are you are... happy with the finishes and things? A couple of them are incredibly good and their standards are incredibly good. A couple of the other guys, their standards aren't so good and mine are better. And I know Andrea's are even better than mine, so I have to sort of think in Andrea's position because I know she's going to come there and go, wrong, 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 do it again, do it again, do it again, um, in a nice way. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to sort of reduce the amount of, of that before she comes down here. But Andrea's eye for quality has failed her. She bought a job lot of irregular slates off the internet for the kitchen floor, and Baz the builder isn't best pleased. That's what we're trying to lie. But Peter said that's what I want. This is a bit too rustic for me. I'm from the black country. I've got something cheap and nasty terracotta from B and Q. Just look lovely. Like that. We like that. <laughs> new terracotta. That's the one we like. <laughs> and we'd have had it down by now. <laughs> With the Christmas break upon them, there's no chance of selling the middle house until the new year. With the costs at a thousand pounds a day, plus the payments on the loan, the budget is crucial. How much over have you gone so far? Worst case scenarios will be ten thousand pounds over. And your original budget was one hundred and fifty. Right, 150. Mm. That's not bad. Which, yeah, it's less than 10%. Which is it a lot less have... than people have been telling me to expect. It so, uh... could have been a lot worse. Mm. Calm descends on St Ives at Christmas. The builders pack up for two weeks, but for Peter, there's no let up. To avoid a six week delivery period, he's gone off to pick up a cheap kitchen, 300 miles away in London. But this is the kind of thing I find frustrating. You'd be 200 yards from your home and it could take you half an hour to get there. London, I think once you move out of it and come back to it, you kind of forget just how aggressive and how fast the whole place is. Just the general level of courtesy is so much higher elsewhere than it is in London. Come on, chubby. Yes! Big banner headline in the local paper. Car crime goes up 100%. Last year it was one, this year it was two. Which I thought beautifully sums up the difference. In that space there. Hang on. Whoa. <sighs> Not so good. By the end of Friday, that kitchen will be completely, utterly fully installed. Home, James. <sighs> Baz and the builders are back after the Christmas break, throwing everything at the middle house. But the work still has to pass inspection by Andrea. You know, that's clearly not been sanded back. You don't kind of start painting. <laughs> You've actually resolved the initial issue of the peeling paint. And even on a completely new wall, you know, bits of lumps of paint have gone. You know, it's just, it's kind of never ending, really. I mean, you could, we could go on looking at every single bit of it and it have the same. It's just people that aren't, don't understand paint or painting, whatever. Peter? Yeah? Can you come and have a look at something? these copper pipes, can you make a note about whether we can buy something that's chrome? Can I finish off writing the list for in there? Yeah, I'd, sorry, I didn't realise you hadn't... Well, I didn't realise you were going to jump straight in here. Sorry, so all right then, OK. I'm trying to do this a bit methodically. You know, things like this. You don't, you don't kind of think someone's not going to do oh. that, but then you discover that, that someone thinks that's OK. As for the concealed pipe work, well... It isn't. Yeah, Daryl the Chippy 
faces the music. We need to finish. I mean, we need to complete this. We can't just sort of go, oh, well, that's that. We're getting half done. We may have to go back to it and go back and forth. But I, but I don't know why that is. I take responsibility for moving this around. I take responsibility. And we've paid, we've paid for our mistakes. But I will not. I will not sit here and be told that, you know, this is all last minute stuff. All this information has been available. The pipes have always been hidden in the wall. It's always been a wall hung thing. But in the end of the day, we are paying for a lack of sequential thinking <coughs> in this building site. And people are getting pissed off with this. And I think there has to be a line drawn where people take responsibility. Yeah. That's the bottom line. And, you know, and it's us that's got to sort out the really, really bad paint job and all that kind of stuff. I think you've gone around it totally wrong, to be fair. Yeah, and the finish is shit. Worse than shit. But you're spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds on the toilet that you can stick in for 80 quid. You know? But funnily enough, it's the spending on these sorts of things that I think is... But they don't make property. They don't increase property value. I, I think that in light of the finish on the walls and the rest of the stuff that's gone on, I am absolutely 100% relieved that I spent a bit more on the white goods. Because at least they don't look shit. Carol? Yeah? Yeah. So much time has been spent on the middle house, the B&B &B has been left behind. Only the electrics, the structural work and some plumbing has been done. Some effort has to go into the B&B now, to get it up and running for the start of the season. Without the Easter income, the whole pack of cards could collapse. It's time for a change of tactic. Be there. Simple as that. Not, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to go through this again. Be there, tape measure, pencil. Hold the plumber by the hand. Peter and Andrea are planning a new life, running a bed and breakfast in St. Ives. But by mid-January, this million pound property gamble is six weeks behind schedule. Andrea, in charge of design, has come down from London to take control. Carpet the stairs. I can visualise more readily the end result. Doesn't mean I always make the right decision, just means I kind of, my mind goes there. They're trying to get the middle house on the market before the spring half term brings another wave of buyers to St. Ives. If they can't sell it, the B&B could be under threat. Curiously, the pressure is bringing Peter and Andrea closer together. It's actually been very good for our relationship because it's given us a joint, something, a joint project. We're not having children together, so this is like, you know, it has... We're having houses. We're having a house, you know what I mean? It, it fills some sort of gap or space. Progress is fast, but with Andrea in charge, the standard of work is much higher. This actually has been thoroughly resanded. I mean, already you can see just how smooth a lot Absolutely. of the finish is going to be compared to what it was like before. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot better. Well. Awful lot better. And do you wish that you just skimmed everything yes. and had done with it? Absolutely. Yeah. The directive now is skim. So how much more is this costing you? Well, actually, we're not sure. But you need to know those numbers very, very quickly, don't you? We do. Luckily, the answer's not far away. Baz the Builder takes them through the figures. Yeah. So we come back to 1.1. Yeah. The upshot is, Baz reckons they're nearly £14,000 over budget. Yeah. OK. You spent all that money on the toilets. Oh, yeah, lovely toilets. <laughs> <laughs> that includes the kitchen for number two, though? No, we never include oh, the kitchen. No. And it doesn't include the boilers or the rest of the fit-out. So looking, it's looking more like we're heading more towards 26, 27, 30 is an overspend overall. £30,000 over budget means they're in trouble. Despite that, the middle house is going well. Under Andrea's supervision, the plumbing's complete, the snags are snagged, and the hidden pipes are at last hidden. Yeah, I mean, all of this just looks so much better now. Yeah. It just looks like it's meant to be. It's all integrated yeah, the it's fittings, all it's all in the same finish. Thank God you turned up to sort them out. In the kitchen, there's mixed news. Peter's bargain units from London are being installed. 
But Andrea's decided the uneven slates, which are all now in place, are going to have to go. We're getting these taken up. We're going to use them right. essentially throughout the three properties in areas that don't matter. It's an expensive lesson in project management. But the kitchen floor comes up and the carpets go down. Peter and Andrea can't wait for evaluation from the estate agents. Nice big kitchen over here, straight out onto a courtyard. A courtyard in St Ives, any kind of outside area, is a huge bonus. It's nice to see a bit of thought going into the renovation of the property. They could have got away with doing a lot less, uh, and many developers would have done. Contemporary, not over the top, not going to offend anybody. Um, that's, that's ideal. It's not the most exciting carpet in the world. Did you have to go that far? Maybe not. It is eaten into the profit. This is what will sell the property, this view from this room. This is it. This is where you bring people. This will sell it. We're looking at somewhere between 450 and 475. Hopefully 465. The bottom line is the cheaper it is, the quicker it's going to go because you're going to broaden your market. So the estate agents think that you spent too much money on your white goods, like your toilet and your wash hand basins, and they think that you spent too much money on your carpet. What do you think about that? I'm not surprised, um, but I think they're soulless in a way. This is no disrespect to the estate agents. Just say what you think. Um, <laughs> but they're looking at it bottom line, and that's the end of the story. So they, they know their market, they know what sells, what doesn't sell. Um, and from their point of view, yes, it probably, we probably have spent more than we need to. And the other thing for me is, they're going to be your next door neighbours. Mm. Whoever buys this yeah. place yeah. is going to know who you are and where you live. And yes, uh, you don't have our address. Yeah, you don't want your neighbours thinking, oh, they're cheapskates and they've done a really nasty, horrible job. And then to come in and have a cup of tea and say, hang on a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. My <laughs> bath doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but there won't be any visitors for a while. They've spent so much time and money on the middle house, the B&B is still a shell. With the overspend so high, it's time for a chat with the bank manager. Gary, what am I doing? Hi, are you unexpected? Peter, that's a very big smile on your face. What's all that about? Uh, we just had the bank manager around. In my innocence, I misread completely the contract. And whereas we have £150,000 for the rebuild, and we had to contribute 50,000, so in my genius like mentality, I thought that meant that we had 100,000 from the bank and 50,000 that we contributed. No, it's 150,000 from the bank and we had to contribute 50,000 on top. So our thing about being over budget. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, if you two were relaxed before, you're going to be laid back now. Does that just make us sound even more doddery, though? <laughs> <laughs> um, Who cares yes. if we get away with it? <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, is, I don't quite know how we haven't. How we got to this point and not knowing what our budget was. Uh, he's just simply misreading. There's something going on here that's a bit odd. There's some surreal fate thing happening. Well, it did. I don't know what it is. I mean, this is it, was only, it was only a few hours ago we were talking about you maybe being out of pocket. Well, we still might be out of pocket. <laughs> I don't really. Maybe there just is a sense of a bit of destiny or something. I don't know. The fact that we found this place at all. Money worries seem to be over. Andrea concentrates on the middle house and the builders crack on with the B&B. &B. Everyone settles into a routine, except Peter, who's nowhere to be seen. He's gone back to London, the place he thought he'd escape from, leaving Andrea to carry on with the build in St Ives. Away from the intense pressure and endless distractions, he can concentrate on sorting out the commercial side of the bed and breakfast. It's a chance to have a good look at his sums and get his business head on, because with only four weeks to go, Peter has no business plan, no bookings and no publicity. So this is the London base, is it? This is basically Andrea's studio come crash pad. Very bohemian and very arty, isn't it? <laughs> it is. She'll love you for saying that. <laughs> when I last saw you in Cornwall, you thought you might have had fifty thousand pounds that you didn't know about from the bank. Um, the paperwork turns out we do have, we do have two hundred thousand pound budget. So bloody grateful for it because we've actually projected costs now are going to be 
between 2.30 and 2.40. No! Mm. That's all the kitchen stuff going in, various other bits, which adds another sort of £30,000 on top. Mm. So we're more like £60,000. Yes. Because we had that <clears throat> incorporated in the first place. Mm. Plus That's where that £50,000 It's still a lot of money. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of money. money. It's a lot of money. So March the 17th you're up for business and you've got no bookings? I mean, we weren't in a position to take bookings because nothing was set up so people don't know who we are, where we are, anything at the moment. Um, but are you going to have beds and things? Is it yeah, all going to be there? It'll all be there. Everything will be there. Have you got a pen and a piece of paper? Uh, many. <laughs> Can you write something down for me? Yeah. How many rooms have you got? Three. Three? Three letting rooms. I need three rooms. OK. On the 17th of March. Two nights. Two nights. Two nights. So you're fully booked for two nights? Excellent. 17th and 18th, do we need? 17th and 18th. Yeah, perfect. The B&B &B is still far from finished, but it does have its first guest. The question is, where will I sleep? Work on the B&B &B has stopped again. Andrea is still stuck in the middle house. Deadlines just seem to come and go for Peter and Andrea. They've missed the Christmas buyers. Now the half-term house hunters are passing them by as well. Easter will be their next chance, and that's just two weeks away. With one final push, it's done. After 23 weeks of dust and near disaster, mounting debts and delays, the middle house is finally on sale for a very reasonable £475,000. Andrea's extra effort has paid off. The house looks fantastic. If the B&B is anything like this, it'll be great. But it's been so much harder than anyone expected. It's been a nightmare, a complete nightmare. And all you can do is just, you just have to be very belligerent and keep going on and every so often crying and then carrying on again. It's that kind of thing. You just kind of go, oh my God, sob, sob. There's been tears. Oh yeah. I sort of go around sometimes, I look at things, and I look at one more crack on the wall, and I go, oh, my God. <laughs> sob, 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 and then, you know, you just carry on again. So this has, like, completely been a money pit, and we've just been pouring energy into it, and we haven't... Uh, the actual reason for this whole thing, the bed and breakfast thing at the moment, you know, I mean, we are obviously progressing on it, and you can have a look in a minute. So if we take them straight, we take them straight up... But the B&B &B is far from complete. So uh, just remind me when you said this place would be finished? Um, two weeks. You'll drop those in a minute. <laughs> it's two weeks' time. It's mine's off. Has it actually changed from the last time I was here? Yeah. The only room with any sign of real progress is the kitchen, and the pressure is taking its toll. What do you think going through all this has done to your relationship? We sailed into this on a sort of cloud of euphoria and sailed through the first few months and then the last couple of months reality has hit and some of the things that have happened have been more than we were expecting by a long way. And it reached a point last week whereby um, it felt like the pressure was so intense that really was it worth doing it. And, um, you know, Andrew was in London very upset. I was down here upset, more upset about her being upset and not being able to do anything about it. Um, do you think you'll survive this? I think we've been incredibly lucky all the way through and to have a have a few weeks of stress which you know, come a month's time, once the B&B's up and running it'll be history, it'll be past. It won't have any long-term effect on our relationship. Peter and Andrea work round the clock to get the place ready for their very first guest. In two weeks, I'll be checking into St Ives' newest B&B. &B. Ready or not? Uh, George, how are you doing? Is it done? Have a look. You're our first, um... First guest? ...person who's seen it who's not been working on it. This is good. 
You yeah. have done it. Mm. Do you have I, no faith? <laughs> I think I probably didn't have it. <laughs> That's the problem. If I had no faith at first, I have now. What they've achieved is nothing short of a miracle. The reception rooms are beautiful, light and airy. Now there's a sense of cool city chic in the heart of St. Ives. And the blend of natural materials fits their organic philosophy. The imposing chunky dining table is made from reused Victorian timbers, polished with natural beeswax. A great place to start the day. All around the house, there's bright, bold artwork by Andrea, her family and friends. And it's all been done in the nick of time. So as we come in the front door, the builders are running out the back door. <laughs> this, this looks like a finished kitchen. Yes. It's such an achievement. It's a practical chef's kitchen that looks brilliant. But upstairs, the best is yet to come. Oh! That is amazing. This is what it's all about. One of three stunning guest bedrooms, literally flooded with light and life. A refuge above the town and sea. It's a masterful and controlled piece of design, built with hard graft and sheer determination. Two weeks ago, I would never, ever have imagined that I'd be lying on this bed having conversations with you guys about how wonderful no, this I don't is. Think, I don't think we thought we would either, to be honest. It wasn't until about four days ago the reality actually hit me. I was like, oh, God, no, <laughs> we're not going to do it. And I had a sort of a virtual massive panic attack about the whole thing. Did you? Um, yeah, I was awake. I think I slept about an hour. And Andrea, bless her, went the opposite way. like, nope, we are going to do all this and sort of pulled me back up again. The drive, pushing this project forward. Well, I don't know, that's a bit fair. How do you feel That's about that? It's not unfair, though. It's not unfair. It is, because you said that. It's not unfair, because it's such an emotional time, don't you think, to get yeah, to the end of something but... like that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. In truth, it wasn't over yet. The organic panda, as the B&B &B was to be called, wasn't quite open for business. Peter and Andrea's living quarters were far from finished, and the lack of a building certificate meant I couldn't stay the night. The next door house had still not sold, and it was another two weeks before they were ready to welcome guests. When I left Peter and Andrea at the end of the last series, they were emotionally drained and financially stretched to the limit, and Andrea hadn't decided whether she was going to stay working in London or whether she was going to help Peter set up the business in St Ives. So a year later, I've come to see if, in reality, running a bread and breakfast lives up to the dream. Peter and Andrea's dream to renovate and run a luxury bed and breakfast in St. Ives was an idyllic one. But the journey to achieve that dream was financially and emotionally draining. When I last saw Peter and Andrea, they'd pulled out all the stops to get their B&B ready for the summer tourist rush. Now I'm back one year later to see how they and their business are doing. Hi, George. Hi. Nice so nice to see you. It's been well. Yeah. Well, thanks. It's been 11 months since the B&B first opened for business. So how's it all going? Really, really good, yeah. How good? We're, we're in a sort of breaking even position at the moment because we're still investing in the business, we're still perfecting things. But um, breaking even for the first yeah. year yeah, is we'll fantastic. Things. I thought it would be the end of the second year we'd break even. Yeah. Um, and the money from the build would sort of keep us going for that, but... Uh, so business is good. So business is good. Yeah, yeah. Business it's is very good. good. Business is more than just good. All the guest rooms are now finished and they've been booked up all summer. The house next door has sold for close to the asking price of £475,000. And with that financial burden lifted, the couple have been able to focus on their new life. So what's it like running a bed and breakfast every day? Thoroughly enjoyable. We've had a few faulty tower moments where I've been mending a... <laughs> Mending a knob on a door because it's fallen off and Peter's been keeping someone entertained downstairs. I've been whizzing by going, yes, the knob's back on, and no, the knob's nearly fallen off, or whatever. 
I'm really glad to see Peter and Andrea working so well together. They've made a real success of the guest rooms, and I can't wait to see what they've done with their own private space on the top floor. So well, this is your this is your yeah. living accommodation. We were sort of it? sleeping yeah. on a deflating bed. Yes. Bedroom. So bedroom, double bed here, and then in here. Yeah, sure. Come in here. The last time I was here, the top floor was far from finished. Now it looks homely, but space is limited, and I wonder how they're enjoying living together in their new home. And now that you've been brought closer together, here mm. and running this business, is it making your relationship better? Certainly over the last year we've spent more time together than we have done, or more quality, quality time together than we have done the previous seven years or whatever it is. Well, obviously we've got the most fantastic place to explore together and we've been for cliff walks and we, very often we go for sort of evening strolls around St Ives and it, it's, a, it's incredibly romantic actually. Andrea's always said that her plan was to spend half her time in London and the other half in St. Ives. But this place must have really had an effect on her. She spent nine months of the last year living at the B&B with Peter, which is great news for their relationship. Is this happiness for you, do you think? Yeah, the, the happiness to me is, is the balance of the two worlds, and that is what I want to experience. And I think when you're in a place like this, you really can sort of begin to understand what real relaxation is. Now, the one thing that you talked about quite a lot with me was about how you sort of want to develop your relationship with Peter emotionally and, and practically, I suppose. How has that turned out, that, do you think? It's like, what's that thing? It doesn't, if something doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Yeah. I think, in a way, he's a much happier person being down here, and I think that, in itself, has had a very positive effect on um, the way we interact. Peter is loving the relaxed outdoor lifestyle and the extra free time his new life away from London gives him. Afternoons are spent learning to surf and taking photographs. And so far, not even early mornings making breakfast and beds have been a grind. It takes me 10 seconds to get to work in the morning. <laughs> um, just, less than that, just open your eyes. Yeah. Well, no, I have to get downstairs. Does that feel like work to you? I'm intrigued. No. For me, it was always kind of a dream to sort of have groups of people sitting around talking about a whole variety of different subjects. And breakfast time, that's what it's become. Peter and Andrea now have the life they dreamt of, but it hasn't all been plain sailing. They spent nearly twice their 150 grand budget. And after selling the next door house, they still have a whopping 350,000 pound mortgage which means the pressure is on to keep their B&B &B looking good and their guests happy. How would you describe your financial management of this project? Lads. Um, nursery school. <laughs> <laughs> so practically every single rule for property development and investment you broke. Yeah, but I think it's because Sound, at the risk of sounding slightly hippie, but I think it's because, you know, we loved the house and the house loved us and it was kind of destined we were meant to be there. And now you both seem incredibly pleased, but you've been through so much. Has it been worth it? Yeah. Definitely. I've got out of London, I'm much healthier and much happier. Well, I'm fulfilling a very long-term dream to have a place by the sea and a place in the city and I just feel very fortunate. It is such an incredible place. Peter and Andrea took a big risk, but it's paid off. They're happy, they've got a fab place in the most beautiful location, and their business is working. You couldn't wish for more. Next time, I return to rural Cambridgeshire to see if the Fitzpatrick's new home and life in the country lives up to the dream. I think this has nearly given me an ulcer. It has been a lot of hard work and a giant money pit, but it's all worth it. Wow, 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 wow.